So you want to beat Subnautica without using any vehicles? What do you got, brain damage? Or are you a masochist that just loves pain? Or do you want to be a god among men like me that has women throwing themselves at your feet? Yeah, yeah, that's not going to happen. Hey guys, my name is Justin, the Tall Guy Gamer, and I'm going to show you exactly how to beat Subnautica without piloting any vehicles. It'll be coming at you fast. This is for advanced players that have played the game before. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, let's get it on. You're going to start out by doing like you do every run and just collecting basic materials so that you can build basic tools. Go ahead and craft your standard O2 tank. Craft your basic fins. Avoid the kamikaze crash fish that are always coming to get you. Craft a scanner, the most useful tool in the game by design. Craft a knife. Craft a repair tool. Scan some sea glide fragments. And then craft that sea glide and hold on to it like it's your sweet, sweet lover because it's the only mode of transportation you're going to have. Go ahead and repair your life pod if you haven't already. Med kits will come in handy. Craft a flashlight if you want. It is optional, but the light is a lot better than the light built on the sea glide. Go collect the compass blueprint from Life Pod 3. It'll be one of the first radio signals you get. Craft said compass so that you can tell which direction you're going. Also optional, but very helpful. Craft a high capacity O2 tank. Craft a rebreather. Go ahead and take a visit down to the purple jelly shroom cave to the Degasi habitat down there. You can make it with just your oxygen tank and your rebreather, I promise. While you're down here, make sure you go in the building to the back room and get the blueprint for the ultra high capacity oxygen tank. It's your main goal down here. If you want to scan the multi-purpose room while you're down here, go for it. Otherwise, we'll get one later. Next, visit the floating island. Your goal here is to scan the multi-purpose room if you didn't get the one down in the cave, scan the exterior grow bed if you want it, and get some marble melon seeds. Next, make your way up to the base up on the northwestern part of the mountain. Once you're up here, scan the indoor grow bed. Then make your way off the island. Find your best place to do your Olympic dive. I give it a 7 out of 10. Make your way back to your base and craft that habitat builder. Make a multi-purpose room, a hatch to get in and then throw on a solar panel or two for energy. Build a fabricator inside and maybe three or four wall lockers to store your stuff. Go ahead and throw down the indoor grow bed, plant your marble melon seeds so you have an infinite source of food and water. Next, find bioreactor fragments and laser cutter fragments in the red grassy plateaus. After you have the bioreactor and the laser cutter blueprints, make your way to Mountain Island or Gun Island or the Quarantine Enforcement Platform, whatever you want to call it. On the island, you have two goals. Grab the purple tablet on top of the base and the second purple tablet inside the cave. Then, find shale outcroppings and break them and collect lithium. So you have 18 lithium, 5 diamonds. The rest you can fill with gold, but make sure you leave at least two inventory slots open. Go around the side of the base and use the submarine bay entrance instead of using the front entrance so you don't waste a purple tablet. Grab the ion cube from inside, then go up the ramps, grab the purple tablet from the pedestal there, go up and place it on the pedestal to disable the force field to the gun disarm button. No need to press it now, we'll be back later.
Head back to home base, use those new diamonds to craft the laser cutter. Also, if you haven't already, build a radiation suit so that you can go to the Aurora. On your way to Aurora, if you're smart, you'll stick to the left side only. Don't go to the back. Watch out for the front. There is a Reaper that would love to give you a big old hug. You don't need to bring any food, water, fire extinguishers, or a propulsion cannon to the Aurora, guys. You can find all the food and water you need on site. You can find fire extinguisher on site. Just make sure you bring your laser cutter and your repair tool. You also do not need a propulsion cannon to get in. Just make this jump on the cargo boxes and jump your way right inside. Open the door with the code of 1454 to get into the cargo bay. Extinguish the fire to get into the drive core room if you want to make the repairs. No, this is technically optional. You do not have to repair the Aurora, but if you want to make it a little easier to explore and get rid of the radiation, go ahead and repair all 3,968 brakes. Next, use your vision impairment tool, I mean laser cutter, to go further into the Aurora. Use the repair tool to get into the prawn bay. Go past the prawn bay all the way to the captain's quarters and use the code of 2679 to get inside and get the blueprints for the Neptune rocket. If you want to explore the other rooms, grab some food, water, and extra batteries, feel free. You should be able to get eight batteries or so out of here, which is really helpful if you don't have a battery charger. And the extra food and water can come in handy. Go ahead and do another dive. I give that a 9 out of 10 because I pulled the sea glide out at the end. That Reaper is a little too close for comfort. Let's get the hell out of here. Go ahead and build a modification station. Craft the ultra high capacity oxygen tank. And a thermo blade. Make your way to your local kelp forest mart. You've got three bags of blood oil. One sack of ghost weed seed. And three deep shrooms, the legal kind, have your ID. Somewhere along the line, collect two rubies, please. And two gel sacks. Let's collect Cyclops fragments. You can find bridge fragments and hull fragments in the mushroom forest. I can promise you three things. One, you'll find those fragments in the mushroom forest. Two, it's gonna take you a while. Three, you're gonna find moon pool fragments and get excited every time thinking, oh, that's a Cyclops fragment, and then you're gonna get mad. Go ahead and don't scan them, because if you scan them, you might be tempted to make a moon pool, and then you'll be tempted to make a vehicle. You don't wanna do that. Don't quit on this run. You don't want to be the person sitting at the bar as an old, in old age drinking and someone says, what's that person's story down there? And the bartender says, well, that's the one who almost beat Subnautica without using a vehicle, but they gave up. Next, visit the wreck near the bow of the Aurora and get the blueprint for the reinforced dive suit. Technically optional, but it will help a lot in the lava zone. Craft the reinforced dive suit. Now before we go to the lava zone, let's collect all the pieces for the enzyme that we need. So go ahead and get an eye stalk. A mushroom sample. And a bulb bush. And we already got the ghost weed seed earlier. Now, before you go to the lava zone, make sure you have 12 pieces of titanium, one piece of quartz, one piece of gold, one wiring kit, one lubricant, one IOB cube, two purple tablets, and one table coral. Take your habitat builder with you, your scanner, and a couple extra batteries. You want to take some food and water? Go ahead. Position yourself directly above the Lost River entrance that's northwest of the bow of the Aurora, just north of the Mushroom Forest. Obviously, make sure you have full oxygen before you dive down. Continue through the Lost River, keeping an eye on your oxygen meter. On the way, stop and use your knife to collect two ghostweed seeds.
Continue on, keeping an eye on your oxygen. Don't worry about the ghost Leviathan. Ignore him and he'll probably ignore you. Probably. Drop down the hole and head towards the inactive lava zone. Don't go too far. 50 or 40 oxygen as far as you want to push it before you whip out your habitat builder and make a multi-purpose room. A hatch so you can get in. And then throw down a bioreactor in the middle. A reliable power source is a critical step to throw in one of your ghost weed seeds and boom, baby, you've got oxygen coming your way. Once you've refilled on oxygen, head back up the hole. This is one of the reasons you don't want to go too far. I want you to go back up the hole you just came down. I want you to head southwest down the tunnel until you reach the disease research facility. Once inside, just grab the three ion cubes that you can get in here. That was one. Here is two. And there's number three. Grab all three of them. It's time to get the hell out. Make it where you're back to your base. Refill on oxygen. Once the oxygen's full, go ahead and dismantle the base from the inside out. Take apart your bioreactor. Get out. Take apart the hatch. And then take apart the multi-purpose room. Dive down a little deeper in the inactive lava zone. Don't go too far. Stay outside the main area with the sea dragon. You don't want to get too close and piss him off. Go ahead and throw down your multi-purpose room again. Throw down the hatch. Go inside, and same as before, put out the bioreactor and throw in a ghost weed seed. In addition, in this one, we're also going to build a fabricator. Now go out and collect crystalline sulfur. You'll need four of those. And nickel ore, you'll need three of those. I promise you can find them all around this area. Now this right here, I just had to show you because I've beat this game like eight times and I swear I've never seen a raw piece of silver ore. So there you go, first time. Grab a mag meringue if for some reason you need food. You can kill it with a thermo blade or you can put it in the bioreactor if for some reason you need more energy. Now make sure you have four crystalline sulfur and three nickel and the four ion cubes before you go any further. Go to the lava castle. On your way in, collect at least six kyanite bars. There's plenty in the cave, I promise you. Go ahead and use one of your purple tablets to disable the force field so you can grab the blue tablet. Go down to the lower level, collect the ion cube, and use your second purple tablet to disable the force field so you can get to the ion battery blueprints. Once you've got all that, head out the same way you came in, make sure you go out the east entrance, and head straight back to your base. Once inside, use two of the kyanite bars that you have to craft another blue tablet. Once again, make sure you have at least four crystalline sulfur, three nickel, and four kyanite, and the four ion cubes, two blue tablets before you go any further. Now go ahead and just swim down the giant red hole in front of you that is the eye of the devil's butthole straight into the active lava zone. Watch out for the sea dragon. You ignore him, he'll probably ignore you. Once again, that's probably. Don't freak out when the queen gets in your face. Use the blue tablet to gain entry to the primary containment facility. 
Use the second blue tablet to gain entry into the inner chamber. If you're a first timer, don't panic when the giant fish puts its claws up on the platform. Once you can move, go ahead and head to the southeast. Go around the structure and collect the ion cube that is available there. If you're like me, you might be drunk and you can't get it. Head across the room and go ahead and insert an ion cube to activate the enzyme hatching computer, whatever the hell it's called. Then head to the southwest and go down inside the cave here. My young need to hatch, to play outside this place. We have been here so Make sure you collect a sea crown seed and grab the other ion cube that's in this cave. I asked them for this freedom, but they vegetation may be Now head back out over by the portal and wait for Big Mama to blow all the sand away for us. Once she does that, put in another ion cube. That'll activate the portal. Let's get out of here. The time is right and break free of their shells. This. That portal will take you back outside. It'll break your wrist at the same time. Then go ahead and head straight to your base. Let's use all the seeds that we collected earlier, along with the new seed crown seed, and we can go ahead and craft the hatching enzyme. Easy as pie, head right back to the portal. A second broken wrist. And then let's hatch these babies. No need to stick around and watch it happen. We can go right back out the door. See ya, Mom. third broken wrist, we're going to have to really see a doctor when we get off this planet. Go ahead and grab the enzyme and cover yourself in the rich, creamy goo. Use the submarine bay to go back up into the alien base. Make your way to the top where we disabled the force field earlier. Go ahead and hit the button to let the trigger happy little needle stab you in the arm. That's gotta f hurt. With the gun shut down, let's head back home. If you haven't already earlier in the game, craft your mobile vehicle bay so that you can start to build the Neptune rocket. Start with the platform, of course. Next, the gantry. That's a tall boy. Next, the Neptune boosters. Just like mom used to make. Neptune fuel reserve, which amazingly takes uh, items that were just discovered from an alien civilization on this planet. Now, if you haven't already made a Cyclops, go ahead and make it now. You might want to be smarter than me and not make it right on top of the Neptune rocket deck because my Cyclops kilted to the side there. Could have been a lot worse. Now, if you don't already have the Cyclops shield generator, go grab a blueprint for that. Either from the dunes or the wreck in the sparse reef. Use the shrooms we had earlier to make hydrochloric acid. 
And then make the polyaniline. Craft the Cyclops shield generator on the Cyclops. Get back out. Don't pilot it. Don't ruin the run. Use the Cyclops shield generator to craft the cockpit. Name your Cyclops something awesome like Little Richard. Then name the rocket my big lock because it is time to go. Hey, let's make a time capsule. Throw in a flashlight and a laser cutter. Say something cool like don't look directly into the lights. Take a screenshot of the exact screen you're looking at now. And then once the time capsule is ready, take another screenshot of that and put it on there. Now they'll be looking at a window in a window in a window. That'll blow their minds. Then you can go to Reddit and argue with someone if anyone still puts these time capsules in the game. And that is it, folks. Let's get out of here. That is how you beat Subnautica without using any vehicles. Is it the best way? Is it the optimal way? Honestly, I don't know. I just know that it worked for me and it'll work for you too. If you guys like this video at all, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you guys have any questions at all, you want me to expand on anything, please put it in the comments below. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to make other videos. Anything you guys want to know about Subnautica, I am here to help. If you guys want to see more content like this at all, please subscribe. Otherwise, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Thank you.